الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اجتبى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا من يرتد منكم عن دينه فسوف يأتي الله بقوم يحبهم ويحبونه أذلة على المؤمنين أعزة على الكافرين يجاهدون في سبيل الله ولا يخافون لومة لائم ذلك فضل الله يؤتيه من يشاء والله واسع عليم إنما وليكم الله ورسوله والذين آمنوا الذين يقيمون الصلاة ويؤتون الزكاة الذين يقيمون الصلاة ويؤتون الزكاة وهم راكعون ومن يتولى الله ورسوله والذين آمنوا فإن حزب الله هم الغالبون صدق الله العظيم Continuing with our series of our ancestors. <clears throat> and it's very important to know our ancestors. Those are the people that we follow for our deen. Those are our examples. Those are the shining stars of our deen. And if you won't know how these people had followed the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how they have committed themselves <coughs> to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will be always just wandering around. And we won't know what's the right implication of the ayahs of Al-Quran al-Kareem and what's the right way of adopting the sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And of course, in that regard, we can be greater than the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whom even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selected for the companionship of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And not only that, he even approved their faith, their iman, and their practices so much. <coughs> that as the Ummah to come till the Day of Judgment, that these are the people that you need to follow and your Iman has to be like their Iman, your practices need to be like their practices. In fact, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made a very important statement in one of his hadith by saying, لَن يَصْلُحَ آخِرُ هَذَا الْأُمَّةِ إِلَّا بِمَا صَلُحَ بِهِ أَوَّلُهُ The last portion of this Ummah which means the group of this ummah that will just come before the day of judgment will not succeed at all and will not be able to keep themselves on the right track on in Surat al-Mustaqim without following the steps of the first group of the ummah and that is Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'in. 
لن يصلح آخر هذه الأمة إلا بما صلح به أوله The last person of the Ummah will not be guided and will not have the guidance and will not be able to keep on this faith and Iman without following that first group of the Ummah Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhim ajma'in But unfortunately our information regarding Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhim ajma'in is so little and most of the cases we don't even know anything about most of these Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhim ajma'in even about the well-known Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhim ajma'in some of them we may just recognize their names because we name people after their names that became another tradition that just using those names but when it comes to those practices we are not even aware why these names are so highly regarded into our deen what was the practice of this person who was named with this name and it's important i cannot overemphasize the importance of knowing the life history of these sahaba ridwanullahi alayhim ajma'in and one of the things that we have to keep in mind Go back and study the life of these Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa And study the life of different Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa We would find some of the things that we don't like. They were considered to be a very high quality amongst those Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa and we have rejected it because we have a term nowadays that we use, fundamentalist. Or backward. And some people will be labeled with that label. And we would be labeling them with those levels. Whereas, those will be the exact steps of Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa Here we find a Sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When you look at his life, you will find him day and night. Doesn't want to waste a single moment of his life without being involved in the dhikr and the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, doing the service to the deen of Allah, spending majority of the time in the recitation of Qur'an and the dhikr of Allah, in Salat al-Tahajjud and Nawafil, fasting during the daytime, doing istighfar the last portion of the night and crying during the night times, making dua and praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, was the general habit of Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa that's the witness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala witnesses for them. They used to sleep for a very small portion during the night time. Last portion of the night you will see all of them doing istighfar. That was a community. That's the type of community that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had developed. But some sahaba ridwanullahi alayhi wa ajma'een were of course more than others just like we find in the hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions different doors of Jannah and he says there is a door of Jannah that is called Babur Rayyan it's for those people who are of a habit of fasting of course it's not talking about those who just fast during the month of Ramadan and it's not those only who would fast only once a day once a month He's talking about those who have a habit of fasting. And they are so much into fasting that they would see you, if you calculate their life, you find a large portion of the, of the life was spent in fasting. <clears throat> Here we find the Sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who was known for spending his time in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by looking at his life 
you can just very clearly say that his hobby was the recitation of Quran al Karim. He was known for his recitation to the extent that sometimes Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would stand for a long time just listening to the, salat, uh, to the recitation of the Sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam while he's reciting Quran in Salat al Tahajjud. Sometime he used to go to the masjid and would start the recitation of Quran. Any person going by would not control himself without stopping over there and he would just wouldn't like to listen to this recitation, beautiful recitation of Quran al Kareem. Aisha radiallahu anha says, sometime when he used to recite Quran al Kareem in the masjid, Ummahat al Mu'mineen, the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, during the night time, they would just gather over there to listen to the Sahaba's recitation of Quran. He says once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was standing by the door and waiting for him to come back and sleep. And he's standing over there, Ya Rasulullah, what are you doing? He says, come enjoy with me. He called me there and there I heard that beautiful recitation of Quran al Kareem of the Sahabi. And not only in normal days, Sahaba Ridwanullah say, during our journeys, when everyone will be extremely tired, we would find this Sahabi standing during the night time reciting Quran al Kareem. And everyone else is sleeping. We used to enjoy his recitation of Quran during those nights while we are laying in our beds and he's reciting Quran al Kareem with his beautiful voice. And with this, he also loved teaching Quran al Kareem. And after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to go to a masjid. After the salah, he would turn around and say to the people, Brothers, please stay with me. Let me teach you some of the Quran al Kareem the way I have heard it from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then he would start teaching people Quran. From Zuhr till Asr, he's teaching Quran. After Asal, he would ask people, is there anyone who would like to learn more of the Qur'an? Anyone volunteers to learn Qur'an? He would just sit over there, here, let me teach you Qur'an. And from Asal to Maghrib, he's teaching Qur'an. After Maghrib, anyone would like to learn Qur'an? And if any one person would volunteer learning Qur'an, here, let me teach you the way I have learned it from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He used to enjoy teaching Qur'an al kareem reciting Qur'an al kareem Doing the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhi wa sallam say during our journeys, sometime just to spend some of the time, just to pass the time, we used to talk about different events, different things. And this Sahabi would tell us, instead of talking about all of these things, why don't we discuss Jannah and Jahannam? Why don't we discuss something about our faith and our Iman? And then he would just change the whole gathering. And he will change the topic of the gathering and would make all of us talk about Deen, about Akhirah, about Qiyamah. The Sahabi's name was Abdullah bin Qais, who is known as Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhu. A very famous and well-known Sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhu. And he was from a very noble clan called Al-Ash'ariyeen. Sayyidina Abu Musa radiallahu anhu, when he heard about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came to Makkah Mukarramah, he was from Yemen. He came to Makkah Mukarramah, embraced Islam, went back to his clan, as per the instructions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him to ask him to come back to Medina Munawwara once he would hear that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have immigrated to Medina. But when he came, when he was coming back, he didn't come back by himself. By that time he was able to impress 50 people and convince them that this is the true deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all of those 50 people left their town, their, their, their cities, their, they left their relatives and all of their businesses from Yemen and they migrated to Medina Munawar. As they were coming to Medina on their way, they were in the boat and the air pushed them to another direction. They ended up in Eritrea. Subhanallah, 
at a place where some other Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een were waiting to immigrate to Medina Munawwara, Ja'far radiallahu anhu and the rest of the Sahaba that were over there. <coughs> Once these people arrived over there, they all together went to Medina Munawwara. We all know Ja'far radiallahu anhu. We talked about Ja'far radiallahu anhu previously. Zul Janahain, a Sahabi who's called a Sahabi with two bird, with two wings who flies in the Jannah with all the birds. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him that tiding because they cut his hand during the battlefield. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he who a tayyar, he is a flying Sahabi who keeps on flying in the Jannah with the two birds that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaced in his two, two, two hands. His wife's name was Asma bint Umais radiallahu anha. When these people arrived Medina Munawwara, here Umar radiallahu anhu heard that these people are talking about their journey and they feel they're feeling too great about this journey of hijrah from Eritrea to Medina Munawwara. Umar radiallahu anhu didn't like them feeling too good about themselves. <coughs> While he was visiting his daughter Hafsa radiallahu anha, Umm al Mu'mineen, that's where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam's wife. Asma was also there, happened to be at Hafsa radiallahu anha's home. He asked Hafsa, Hafsa, who do you have at your home? She said, Asma. Oh, this is Jafar's wife. Yes. He called Asma from behind the curtain. He says, Asma. He said, yes. You people feel too great about yourselves that you did this hijrah. But, نحن sabiqun. We did the hijrah much before you people. So don't feel too great about yourself. And let your people know that we have taken that step much before you people did. So we are better than you people are. He just wants to change their feelings. Asma radiallahu anha got upset. He said, you people were with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam all the time. He's teaching you, he's feeding you, he's taking care of all of your needs. And we were stuck over there and you were telling me that we shouldn't feel good about our souls? And now, because she's upset, I swear I won't eat or drink anything until I would go and complain about this to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she went and complained. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Asma, Asma, next time Umar told you something, tell him that we did two hijrah. One from Makkah to Eritrea, the second is from Eritrea to Medina. And Umar, you have done only one hijrah, just from Makkah to Medina. Wants to make her feel good. <coughs> and here Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhu heard this also. And of course as we know that up to that time, these Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi who were from Yemen and they both forced them to Eritrea, they were feeling bad that they wasted so much time, otherwise they could have been with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam earlier. But now after hearing this hadith that people who came from Eritrea to Medina Munawwara they will get double the reward of the hijrah. Abu Musa al-Ashari radiallahu anhu and his group started feeling great about that mistake and about whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will was and they went on a wrong direction and came to Medina Munawwara. So they used to always read this hadith that نحن أصحاب الهجرتين We are the people who did two hijrah and rest of you people have done only one hijrah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Through this hadith of two hijrah and the reward of two hijrah really have given us a beautiful direction and a lesson. Many times when we try to compare things, we try to give one of them more importance over the other. <coughs> we may forget that two of them, both of them might be important in their own way. Umar radiallahu anhu's importance, everyone knew it. Everyone knew the greatness of Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Abu, Abu, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu and these Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa But Umar Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't want those Sahaba to feel bad of spending so much time in Eritrea <coughs> and being away from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he didn't tell them that these people, yes, these people are greater than you because they spend more time with me. That was a fact. But he gave them another virtue that they had, and that was, you got the reward of two hijrah. So at least they are pleased with the reward that they got. 
Don't make anyone feel bad. Make them feel good of themselves, of the good deeds that they have performed. Of course, not to be arrogant, but at least this is a sign of faith and iman, to feel good of our good deeds and feel bad of our evil deeds. <coughs> As these 50 Sahaba Ridwanullah from the clan of Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiyallahu anhu immigrated to Medina Munawwara, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam really liked them, like the whole clan of al-Ash'ariyeen. Once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhi wa in the hadiths in Bukhari and Muslim, that I know the houses of all of these al-Ash'ariyeen, I know each of their houses. How do I know their house? Because they invite him too much? No. The reason is, I know their house is because night time when I go around on the streets of Medina Munawwara to see what my companions and my Sahaba are doing, I always hear the recitation of Quran al kareem from these houses. I recognize them by their beautiful voices of the recitation of Quran al kareem Each time I go by their houses, I hear the recitation of Quran al kareem <coughs> And this is also teaching us how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to keep an eye on Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhi wa jama'in. Watching them. Making sure that they are learning these things from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiyallahu anhu, Abu Musa, you know there is an ayah of Qur'an al kareem that is regarding your clan. He said, Ya Rasulullah, what ayah is that? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited the ayah that says, O people, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who believe, if you turn away, فَسَوْفَ يَأْتِ اللَّهُ بِقَوْمٍ يُحِبُّهُمْ وَيُحِبُّونَ Allah will bring a group of people who love Allah and Allah loves them. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Abu Musa, this ayah is about your clan. Your clan is the clan that Allah loves them and they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. What a certificate that they had. From Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and of course, an ayah of Quran al kareem that can be recited, that will be recited till the day of judgment. And it's not that these people are getting 100 or 200 or 2,000 rewards. It's much greater than this. Allah is guaranteeing that I love these people. And these people love me too. Adillatin ala al-mu'mineen. They are very soft with the believers. Adillatin ala al-kafirin. Very strict with the kuffar. Before these people arrived to Medina Munawwara, as Imam Ahmad rahmatullahi alayhi have narrated in his musnad, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa jama'in, soon a group of people will be coming to Medina, will be arriving Medina, who are very soft hearted. They cry for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before they arrived, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was informed by Jibreel alayhi salatu wa sallam that this is the quality of this group of people that will be arriving with Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiyallahu Because of this quality, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent Sayyidina Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiyallahu anhu to Yemen, assigning him as a governor to one to a certain part of Yemen, and the instruction he gave him as Imam Ahmad rahmatullahi alayhi again have read it in his Muslim, that this group of the, uh, Abu Musa, when you go to uh, Yemen, make sure that the main thing you do is keep on teaching people Quran. Once you arrive Yemen, keep on teaching people Quran. And he took that instruction for the rest of his life. After Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also, he was always involved in teaching Quran. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu made Abu Musa ash'ari radiallahu anhu the governor of Yemen. Uh, of uh, uh, Basra and he trusted him so much I don't know how many of us are aware that Umar radiallahu anhu's will at his time of death was after my death don't keep any of these governors that I have, ass I have assigned for more than a year because I don't want to be questionable for them after my death 
as long as I was alive, I had that responsibility. But I don't want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to question me for their mistakes after my death, Umar, because you assigned him and he did this. So he said, I'll give you maximum one year, next Khalifa, within a year of my death, he has to change all of the, my governors, assign your own people. Assign different people, different governors. Don't go by my selection. But that will also say, keep Abu Musa at least for four years as a governor. I can take care of him. And I can be answered. I can be questioned about him and I know I'll be safe. Subhanallah. Look at the trust that keep Abu Musa at least for four years. Because I trust him and I can be questioned about him and I'll be safe. What a great the Sahabi would be that Umar radiallahu anhu is willing to take responsibility of answering on his behalf even after his death. Subhanallah. In the year 44 of Hijrah, Sayyidina Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhu passed away in Kufa <coughs> while he was 63 years old. Just Rasulullah, as he followed the steps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam throughout his life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with that sunnah also that he, when he died, he was the same age of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he went with a great dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he once achieved and he got during his lifetime. He says, once I went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Ya Rasulullah, my uncle Amir have passed away and he asked me to request you for a dua for him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam raised his hands and he said, Ya Allah, forgive Abu Amir. He says, as soon as I heard this, I said, Ya Rasulullah, and please a dua for me too. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allahumma ghfir li Abdullah ibn Qais wa adkhilhu mudkhalan kareema. Ya Allah, Forgive Abdullah bin Qais, which is Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhu. Forgive all of his sins, and Ya Allah, once he dies, put him in Jannah with all honor and respect. And he went with this dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Of course, you don't need anything more than this, and he didn't need anything more than this prayer of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as is facing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us the love for these Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhi wa and tawfiq to follow the steps of these great Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhi wa May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us to Surat al Mustaqim to follow the steps of these ancestors and all of these Sahaba and Tabi'een. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah alayhi wa lakum wa lisa'il al Muslimina wa al Muslimat wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillah.